Yeah, there was a little groan there from, from Don. Um, mm. First of all, Yannick Vestigar has been booked for a challenge on Bukayo Saka. But uh, Jordan Pickford's just come up. We're speaking about Christian mm. Eriksen. Keeper came for that one. Tight angle, Don. But Eriksen was getting there first. And ultimately, it came to nothing from Rasmus Hoyland. But yeah. it was a wee bit nervy from the England defence, was it not? It was. Pickford? And I tell you what, you know, uh, Jordan Pickford, in the end, done quite well because... Ericsson was always going to sort of get there just ahead of him. So what you're thinking, if you're Christian Ericsson there, if you're a forward, you're thinking, Take right, what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to sprint to the ball. I'm going to slow myself down mm -hmm. and I'm going to give the goalkeeper half a half an inkling that he can get there. And then you commit the foul, you commit the penalty. So in the end, Pickford done quite well. Do you, do you think um, Pickford gets sort of the respect that you'd expect from someone who's kind of pushing 70 caps now for England or whatever it is? I think, do you know what, Tom? I think it's his character. I mean, you know, I've watched Everton an awful lot of times. Um, I work for the Premier League and my job is to watch every single game, every single minute of every single team. And nearly single-handedly, he's kept Everton in the Premier League over the last two or three years. Um, I think what it is, your perception, or my perception anyway, is when you watch a player, you're watching obviously the ability, but you're watching the character. And he probably doesn't come across as that likeable, like that lovable, mm -hmm. you know, because he's, he's spiky, he's edgy, he's like throws his hands around when he makes a save, he's high five and he's got something to say. Um, so probably it's a little bit harsh that you sort of, or I do anyway, look at his character. He's Not just flapped, more so he's than just the flapped performer, that across while you're it, talking, Don. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're just ahead of us. He has just come out and flapped. To be fair, Don, I watch every single game on the world and every single minute, every set of average. Watch every single game, me. By the way, have I won the best backdrop? Yes or no? No, I'm feeling marks. Looks sultry. I've got Cologne <laughs> Cathedrals just there, but the lighting wasn't right. So we'll try. You know, going, going back to Pickford, I mean that's incredible. Almost seventy caps. I mean, he's, I saw. I, I, I think maybe the criticism. It's not a criticism. It's just opinion, isn't it? But I don't think he's a David Seaman or a Ray Clemens or a Peter Shelton or whoever. I just don't. But he's clearly he's clearly not a bad goalkeeper, is he? But uh, you know, it's Am not. Am I right in what I'm saying, though? Am I right or wrong? Where sometimes we look at the character and we sort of our perception is right. Let's what, because he's screaming at because he's screaming at a back four and always, you know. Yeah. He's very demonstrative in the way I he remember, goes about. I tell you, the one that summed it up for me was in that Croatia game mm -hmm. that you mentioned before, Craig. He pulled I off did... a save against Manzukic, and he stood over Manzukic. I remember it clearly. And he stood over Manzukic and he absolutely hammered him. Yeah, but you did thought, that, weren't you? No, but then Manzukic then scored. And I th I'm thinking, what are you doing? Oh, like you've oh, led, oh, you're you've led over Manzukic and you've absolutely caned him. There's still about 20 minutes left to play. And then Manzukic scored in the game. It's like, you just got your come up and say. You seen what's happened though since England have scored? Oh, they've just yeah. retreated and Denmark have, have pushed That's forward. Course, the have. ball's been played in the England half now. It's a corner, by the way. The attempt came off. Mark Gahey. You're speaking about Jordan Pickford having won 70 caps. What about this for a stat? Ilkay Gundogan has won nine more caps than Jordan Pickford. None of them for Ilkay Gundogan have ever come in a knockout game of a major tournament. How about that? Nice no, so I'm glad, though. Well, it's going to change that. That's, that's, but that's, you're going to have... That's, you, you use that start because it's going to be absolutely it's rubbish. It's going to be obsolete in, in a couple days. of weeks. But that feeds exactly. into what I'm saying, doesn't it? When you look at Ilkay Gundogan, you stand there and you go, love him. Absolutely love him. Cleverest player ever. High yeah, goal IQ. Yeah, but he didn't have a great season for Barcelona, as you as you well know. Shall I just plug mm. La Liga while we're on here? Why we not? have uh, the the rights to La Liga, as you know, and you do some of the games, Mark. And we we watch a lot of Gundogan and and Bellingham and Alvaro Morata, mm. and you know Girona was a huge story this year. Uh, you know they were the biggest challengers to Real Madrid, but Gundogan was was not. He was in a, a difficult scenario. As this, what's happened with this corner, boys? Well, so Vestigar's oh. headed over, but the referee's brought it back for a foul. He's and a big lad, isn't he? It's hard to miss that forehead, isn't he, once he gets up there? <laughs> he won Man City a few titles, by the way, Gundogan. No, I know, but I'm saying when he went to Barcelona, and he was even complaining about his teammates. He threw, uh, when Ronald Rojo got sent off in Paris, uh, he completely threw him under the bus and said, he shouldn't be making that kind of mistake, and he shouldn't be doing this, and... And early in the season, when they lost to Real Madrid, when Bellingham scored that wonder goal in the first Clásico of the season, uh, Barca played well for 75 minutes and then crumbled. And he was, maybe rightly so on this occasion, Gundogan was upset with what he perceived to be the lack of care in the dressing room about losing the game. So 
he 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 rattled a few cages at Basser this year, but I, I definitely think we did not see the best of him. Uh, but then again, Bassa had a problematic season, but he's in this Germany Ooh. side. You've Shot got from Andrew. distance, goal, Denmark. Equaliser. Wow. It's a stunner from distance. Well, it looks it? like it's Hoy... Oh, it's... what a strike. Is it Hoyland? It no, is that... Hoyland. No, Holmund. It... Holmund has scored the equaliser for Denmark, number 21. Should he save it the there? The 34th. Should he was a long way out with hardly any back left, wasn't he? Should, should he save yards, it, Greg? We were chalking pictures. Yeah. Should he save it? There's the colourful red, and the Danish fans absolutely loving it. Bright red all over the place. Uh, this is what, what, did we, what did we talk about? What did we talk about? This negative, go back in your shell, you score a goal, England, and you let the opposition... I think it's a goalkeeper mistake. Well, whatever it is, Don, whatever it is. No, no, it is, England, but it's standard. I, I never expected anything let, different. It's the mentality. Well, Harry Stone Kane, Paul. It's come from their own throw in left back. Harry Kane's dropped deep. He's tried to switch a ball from the left back position. He scuffed it. It's been picked up in the middle of the park. Big mistake from Harry Kane. Uh, keep a don or not. It's a good strike. Nah, to right, be here, fair, it's here, gone in off the post. Here's one for you with regards to the goalkeeper there. We've we've like a little bit of a head. We've seen a couple of replays. His footwork is not good. And if there's one thing Shaka always says about goalkeeping, watch their footwork. He's taken a little step before he has to get across, and that's cost him. I don't know if you can say it's the goalkeeper's issue. I think there you've got to stop the shot, Craig. Well, on top of well, listen, on top of that, let me let me just try to paint a little picture. Trippy has got the, the throw in back and deep in the left back position, deep. Uh, he's thrown it to Harry Kane. He's pressurised. He's taken the touch, Harry Kane, and he's he's tried to do what we always see him do for Tottenham and Bayern. He's tried to spread, spray a long ball straight across uh, the pitch, and he scuffed it. I think he was under a little bit of pressure. He scuffed it, and and Denmark pounced on it. So really and truly, it was England's own doing. But just popping the champagne here. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, Don, we're not supposed to drink before we go and do a live show at Bristol, but we might have to make an exception if this continues. But do you know what, though? Do you know what? Did anyone really expect England to do anything different when they took the lead, apart from back off? It's kind it's of not the same as what happened thing. against Serbia. It's a mentality it's, thing. They've got these great players that can dominate a game. Every one of them dominates games for their own clubs, right? You, this is, this is I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. It has to be. We talked about it. Do you, think, do you think it's a leadership issue as well? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah, there's, there needs to be people on the field, Tom, that says, hang on a minute, guys. Hey, we don't let that allow this to happen. We control, we dictate, and we make Denmark chase the ref ball around three. and tire them out. Play the advantage there, ref. Play the advantage. Denmark could have been in. I I just seen a, a Danish player who looks as if he's had his hair dyed blonde there. Obviously, he's been watching videos of the of 98 you. World yes. Cup in France. But he's still on the field. <laughs> <laughs> still, there's still plenty of time. 